Welcome to Prajim Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 24 of ASP.NET video series. In this session, we'll learn about selecting a specific list item within a checkbox list control using selected value and selected index properties. We'll also learn how to select or deselect all list items of a checkbox list control. Before continuing with the session, I strongly recommend to watch parts 17, 21 and 23 of this video series. Let's look at an example. Let's drag and drop a checkbox list control onto the web form. From the previous session, we know that a checkbox list is a collection of list item objects. And these list items can be added to the checkbox list at the design time using the HTML source, or we can do it at runtime programmatically using code. Let's add some sample list items to this checkbox list control. So this checkbox list control is now displaying levels of education like diploma, graduate, postgraduate, doctorate. Let's change the repeat direction to horizontal so all of them appear in one line. Okay, now when we run this application, you know, none of the list items within this checkbox list is selected by default. Now let's say, for example, I want graduate to be selected when the page actually renders. There are two ways to do that. We can do that at design time using the HTML source. So here I can set this graduate, you know, selected to true. So when you set this property to true for this list item object, so let's flip that to design mode and see that graduate is selected. So obviously when the page renders, this uh, list item object, the graduate list item object is selected by default. Okay, but then we are doing that at design time, you know, in the HTML source. Is it pro possible to do programmatically? Absolutely. And how do we do that? We can make use of the selected index and selected value properties. Okay, so first let's see how to use the selected value. Now, if you look at that, this the value for the graduate uh, list item object is 2. So, programmatically, I can say the ID of the checkbox is checkbox list one dot selected value is equal to two. So now when I run the page, look at that. In the design mode, you, we remove that selected property. So obviously it is not selected at design time, but when we run the application at runtime, the um, list item object with value is equal to two, which in our case is graduate will be selected when the page renders. Similarly, I can also make use of the selected index property because if you look at that, you know, these list item objects have got index as well. The value is 1, 2, 3, and 4, and the index is, starts from 0. So for diploma, it's 0. For graduate, it's 1. So if I want the graduate uh, list item object to be selected, then I can make use of the selected index property and it's an integer. So selected index property, it's an integer. So I'm setting that to 1. And if you look at the index of 1, that's for the graduate list item object. So obviously, when we run this, the page, you know, when, when the checkbox list renders, it should default to um, graduate. Look at that. But then one important thing to keep in mind here is that whenever you do this, you know, the default selection in the page load event, make sure you do that within this if not is post back condition. Okay. Otherwise, what's going to happen? Let's actually look at that. Let's, you know, drag and drop a button control onto this web form. Okay. So I have a button control here. Let's put an HTML break there. So it comes in the next line. Let's double click the button control. Okay, now let's say whenever I click this button, I want to show the text of all the selected list item objects. So obviously to do that, we can make use of the for each loop. So for each list item, li in checkbox list one dot items. Okay, what we want to do, if li dot selected, if the list item is selected, then all we want to do is to write the text of that list item. So li.text. And then let's put an HTML break so that the each selected item text will come in its own line. Okay, so now 
look at what we are doing. We are, you know, setting the selected index of the checkbox list one control on the page load event. Okay, now let's run that. So obviously on page load, the graduate checkbox will be selected by default because we have set that, you know, selected index to that one. Now look at that. When I click this button, graduate checkbox is selected. It appears correctly as expected. Now let me select diploma, postgraduate and doctorate as well. Look at that. We have everything selected. Now I click the button. Look at what's going to happen. All of the selections are gone and it only retaining that graduate. Why is that? That's because if you have understood the events in the page lifecycle of a web application, page load event gets fired before the button click event. Okay, so when the page is rendered, I'm actually selecting all of them. And when I click the button, the page will get posted back to the server. On the server, you know, view state restoration happens during the page initialization event. So all of these are selected. But then after that, page load event happens. In the page load event, what are we doing? We are saying the selected index of checkbox list one control is one, which is nothing but the graduate. So only that gets selected and button click event is happening after the page load event so by the time it gets to execute this button click event you know it has only graduate list item object selected that's why only that gets printed out so for this page to correct to work correctly all you have to do is wrap this in this condition if not is post back which means we want to default the selection of that checkbox list one control you know only if it is the initial get request if it is not a post back request if it is a post back request then don't execute that okay so now if we run this during the initial get request this property is post back will return false false of false is true so it will come here graduate will be selected you know now if I click that, okay, graduate printed fine. When I select diploma postgraduate, I'm literally unchecking graduate and I click the button. Look at that. I get what I expect. If I want all of them, I select all of them and I get all of them. Okay. So whenever you use selected index or selected value and you are doing that in a page load event, make sure you wrap that inside if not a post back condition. All right, so we have seen how to, you know, select a specific list item within a checkbox list control using selected value and selected index properties. Now let's see how to select or deselect all the list items of a checkbox list control. Now let's drag and drop a button control onto the web form. Okay, let's drag and drop a button control here. And let's have another button control. Okay, let's actually put some space in between the button controls and let's change the text of the button first button control to select all and then the text of the second button control to deselect all okay so when we double click this button control you know the event handler gets generated so let's write the code there so when we click that button select all button what should happen we want to select all the list items of the checkbox list control how do we do that you know if you if you have understood properly until now all you have to do is loop through each list item object retrieve the list item object and then set the selected property to true if you remember list item object has got several properties like text value and along with that it is also having the selected property if you set that to true that specific list item object will be selected now we want all the list items to be selected so we loop through each one of them and set the selected property of that list item object to true and to loop through each list item we can make use of the for each loop so for each list item li in checkbox list one dot items what we want to do we just want to set the selected property of that list item object to true that's all and when we click the deselect all button what we want to do we want to do the opposite of that loop through each list item object and set the selected property to false it's as simple as that So we set this to false. 
so now when we run this when the page loads you know it defaults to the graduate but look at this when I say select all all of them get selected when I deselect all all of them gets deselected select all click this button and it prints everything okay on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET C Sharp and SQL Server interview questions that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day